So it's a country where first came austerity, then the conversation turned to identity politics, big tent center-right and center-left parties splintered, and now it faces yet another snap general election. No, we're not talking about the UK, but we're talking about Spain this time, where voters this coming Sunday return to the polls for the second time in six months, the fourth time in four years. Each time, the political landscape seems to splinter further. Why? If elections can't clear the air, what can? The difference since the last vote back in April? Well, increased brinkmanship over Catalonia, for one, what with the recent violence there after long sentences were handed down to separatist leaders. How long a shadow will that cast over the election? And what are the other issues that matter most? More broadly, what cautionary tale for uh, not just uh, Britain can we find in these Spanish elections, but uh, other EU nations like Germany, where uncertainty over the future seems to be polarizing the electorate in ways unseen in nations usually perceived as havens of moderation. Today in the France 24 debate, we're looking at Spain returning to the polls. With us, Tony Fernandez, Deputy Secretary of the Europe Branch of Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez's Socialist Party. Thank you for being with us. Good evening. Uh, we have... We're in good legal company, two attorneys and commentators. Uh, Edward Salsas is with us, as is uh, Jean-Marc Sanchez. Welcome back to the show. Good evening, François. And from Barcelona, Berta Barbet, researcher at the Autonomous University of Barcelona and political analyst at Politicon. T tell us what Politicon is. Uh, Politicon is a, is a group of people that, that created a, a blog and a platform to kind of like put some empirical evidence and some knowledge from the from the academic world to the political debate and so we we started doing blog posts and now we we collaborate with plenty of media and and plenty of other organizations that that won our on our input and our uh, knowledge all right and you're studying voter habits we'll be talking about those voter habits coming up the france 24 debate on facebook and twitter hashtag f24 debate Let's begin with the latest surveys as uh, we look up to look ahead to Sunday. Prime Minister Sanchez came out of the last snap election in April bolstered. There you see what, what's on the bottom line is the is what is what you have in the uh, uh, in the outgoing parliament. But he couldn't find coalition partners to his left or to his right. This is a poll of polls you're seeing. It was published last week by newspaper um, El País. And there you see uh, Sanchez's party perhaps losing two seats. Um, we have uh, the uh, conservatives, PP, uh, gaining big. The far right, the, those are the ones in green on, the, on, the, on that chart, uh, which could uh, sc score much higher. Uh, and the far left losing a lot of traction, same with the centrists. Um, of course, this is the, the big unknown, Tony Fernandez, is one third of the voters said they didn't know who they were going to vote for. So how reliable is what we just showed? Well, the best poll is certainly the one, uh, you know, to be uh, done uh, in the ballot uh, on, on Sunday. So it's um, a bit uh, difficult. Why are so many speculated. voters undecided? Well, I think obviously you mentioned that, you know, there have been four elections. Uh, on the one hand, obviously people are a bit tired uh, of uh, going uh, to elections. I think that there are a number of factors that can explain, uh, you know, as you mentioned also, the, the polarization of society. Um, you know, you have the rhetoric of certain political parties, which has been, you know, fueling this type of uh, extreme, uh, you know, uh, far right uh, movement. Uh, you also have, I think, we, we cannot ignore it, um, uh, social um, uh, networks uh, in a way have been, I think we, we read the news uh, recently, they have been manipulated uh, in, um, you know, in, in order to get people abstaining from voting, from participating into the political process. Uh, and There's been voter this, suppression. Well, there has been, I mean, this By is... This is a phenomenon that we have seen in, uh, you know, in the UK with the Brexit, uh, in the US uh, with the elections, and I think increasingly we are seeing that also in, in other countries. By who? Who, who, who wants to, to discourage people from voting? Well, I think that some political parties are using it. Uh, in, in the news, you could see that uh, you know, Partido Popular has been you know, hiring uh, ads campaign in, in, in Facebook, um, obviously indirectly, uh, in order to fuel people refraining from going to, uh, to vote on Sunday. So, and, and many times elections are also a result of who stays at home. So, What kind of turnout are you expecting, 
John Mark. I think that we had too, too, too many elections within the last five uh, years in Spain. I think it's the fourth time we have general elections. So I think that the uh, Spani Spaniards are quite fed up with going to elections each uh, 12 or 13 months. Uh, I, I think that th there is one thing for sure. The two newcomers, Ciudadanos, the center-right uh, new coming party since 20 years now, but it's a, a new, a new, a new play on, on the field. And and Podemos will probably uh, uh, have s serious uh, uh, problems after these elections. Uh, many people say that Ciudadanos has been dancing tango back and forth in and out all the time, uh, uh, being on the right side and left side, uh, without having a clear approach of what they really wanted to do. So I think that will be the one who will suffer the most from these elections. Probably Podemos will also suffer too from not having been able to um, form government with the socialists. Now I think that uh, uh, Tony, Tony's friends, uh, 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 the, uh, the Socialist Party of Pedro Sanchez will probably win. And in spite of the very nice last name he has, yeah, but is it a win he will probably not now. He can't form a government. He cannot form a government alone. That's the problem he has. So he has to uh, mm -hmm. dance with someone. The only question we were asking uh, to Tony before is who is going to dance with? All right, and you, you mentioned uh, the problems of the far left. Uh, in this election, the new kid on the block comes not from the far right, but from the far left. He's 35-year-old Inigo Errejon, who broke away from Podemos and spoke with uh, France 24. His Mas País party says they've decided there comes a point when voters want results, and that means, well, compromise. If you vote for the same people, the same will happen. So you need to vote differently. We have a country that spent too much time paralyzed, and it's time to move forward. So we're hearing there, Edward tells us that, uh, okay, we're on the far left, but uh, we could compromise and uh, support a government there. Well, I think that what we're seeing here is that uh, the Spanish voters are uh, disappointed of the of all the political all the political parties, uh, the left uh, wing parties and the right wing parties. So we have the same phenomenon in the, in the two uh, parts of the of the of the of the field. So in a way, I think that um, what uh, Inigo Rejon is trying to do now is to capture some of the electorate from uh, Podemos, so from the far left, and then part of the socialist voters as well, because uh, mm, the Podemos and the socialists did not agree on forming a government, but it's it's the fault of both parts. In, in, in Spain, what we are seeing is that there's a lack of, of capacity to, to, to reach agreements. So uh, th we have four main parties, now five main parties, and none of them have been able to reach agreements. Why? Uh, is it because this business of coalition building is kind of new to the Spanish? Is it... Uh why is why was everybody did everybody stake out such Pactar an absolute torra, uh, such an absolute um, position the last time round? I think that Spain has been used to a to a to a to a two uh, party system for many many years, and then uh, this the socialist party and the popular party had to reach uh, uh, an agreement with very small parties, the nationalistic parties, the parties representing the minorities in 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 Spain, the Basques, the Catalans, and. And the equilibrium has been reached uh, like this for many, many years. And now that the two main parties lost their their credibility because of mainly corruption, well, let's not forget that it's corruption which undermined uh, the power of these two parties, two other parties appeared, now three other parties, there's there's the far right as well now, and, and in a way they are spin-offs of the same system. So in a way, what the Spanish population is discovering is that the new ones are not mm, much better than the old ones. Do you agree with that, Peter Barbet, that the new parties are spin-offs of the uh, two main blocks? Well, I think I think that there are many things going on. Uh, I, I think that the Spanish system is very used to having uh, coalition governments at the regional and local level. So that can can be the reason why why we're seeing this blockage uh, right now. I think that the reason why we're seeing blockage has more to do with the fact that the electoral system punishes uh, parties that are, have a medium size, and so the all the parties are very afraid of making any kind of mistakes that will led them to, to lose, uh, even if it's a small amount of votes, because they're scared that the electoral system will punish them a lot. And then, obviously, we have the Catalan situation. As, as Eduardo was saying, 
the the government the governments in Spain used to be created many like unless you had a big majority with the with the support of regional parties, and the fact that Catalan regional parties right now are not in a position to kind of like negotiate uh, makes it very hard. Uh, so. My understanding is that it's not necessarily the new parties that are generating the blockage, but a combination of, of different things. And obviously what I do agree is that we're seeing uh, parties appearing constantly, and that probably has to do with a very negative abuse of the political system that kind of burn parties very fast. So the moment political leaders start negotiating and start playing the political games, this kind of like, uh, frustration that that generated the, their appearance it makes them very 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 easily criticizable and so we have new parties appearing constantly yeah the, but, the, the last election in April saw the far right enter Spain's parliament for the first time since the end of the Franco dictatorship Vox didn't perform as well as first elected this time it could be a proper surge James Wilson uh, reading a report done by our team <laughs> After winning seats for the very first time in Congress six months ago, the far-right Vox party thinks it's on the up and it's deeply ambitious. This is much more than just an election. This is a real political battle for the survival of a nation. We will keep fighting until we get government with a working patriotic man at its head, such as our president, Santiago Abascal. This will be the first time that I vote Vox because I think that it's the only party that supports Spain and the unity of Spain when it comes to Catalonia. As a Spaniard, I will always stand by my country and that's why I vote Vox. To fight for the unity of the nation, the freedom of the Spanish people. I never voted for the popular party. And until Vox, I never had a political party that represents me. Four years ago, the far-right party won a mere 0.23% of the vote. But in April, more than 10% of the electorate supported them. Jose Pablo Ferrandez works for a polling firm. Thousands of calls have allowed him to study and understand the mindset of those who vote for the Vox party. They are people who are right-wing, and they're mainly men. At least 70% of them are men. According to the latest polls, Vox could double their seats in Congress this Sunday, meaning they become the third largest political party in Spain. Berta Barbet, uh, it's too early, right, to, to call Vox yesterday's news since they underperformed in those European elections in the spring. Uh, what, what are you expecting when it comes to the far right? I think that the, they will increase their, their vote share, uh, especially because one of their main competitors on the on the space, Ciudadanos, is is clearly in a political crisis. But also because they've changed strategies, they appear with a very all extreme ring, uh, extreme right uh, populist message, talking about feminism and and uh, Franco and this kind of stuff. And what we've seen these last weeks is is a change from what we're more used in other European countries. That is this very identity-based messages uh, based on, on immigration and the European Union and the need to protect the identity. And we, we know that, that the, when the extreme right parties have made this movement, they've, it has usually paid off electorally and they've, and they've appealed to more and more and more people. So I would expect that to work to some extent and, and, and them to get more voters. We we're gonna see how they how the situation evolves in the in the medium and, and long term, but probably the 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 crisis of Ciudadanos is gonna leave them the kind of like main opposition on the right to the Popular Party, and they clearly would be in a better position now. Jean Marc Sanchez, uh, I think Edward was pretty much right saying before that uh, there are too many players. You know, we have a problem in Spain saying uh, mucho pan para poco chorizo, which means there are a lot of parties now involved in the game. So before you got only two, it was easy, one or the other. We don't have a, a second turn election like in France and Spain. So you cannot uh, uh, get rid of some people first and then 
pick up whatever or whoever you want. So now yeah, you, if uh, I explained, by the way, Spain's electoral system, we'd be here while well, the rest of the hour, I think. <laughs> okay, I mean, well that's that's easy. Should they change that's the easy. electoral law? They, they, they could eventually, but the constitution uh -huh. is made not to be changed because you need a triple vote: a vote from the uh, Congreso de los Diputados, the Parliament, the, the senators, and a, and a public referendum. And if you ask anyone in Spain today to change something, they will probably say no. Not only because of the political system, but the Catalonia crisis that we'll probably talk about. Tony Fernandez, after this election, if it's still undecided, will you say to yourself, well, there, we need to review the system entirely? Well, there are certainly improvements that you can make to any electoral system, uh, but at the same time, we have seen results under this ele electoral system, you know, uh, 15 years ago. As you mentioned, there were two main political parties and we're seeing a different scenario now. So I wouldn't change the rules of the game just because they, don't, they are not convenient. I think that... Uh, and I wouldn't make a, I wouldn't put all political parties in the same uh, box um, when it comes to capacity to reach compromise. Um, and, and here the word box was was not a was not a joke. Um, I mean the the point is uh, the Socialist Party has proved I think after the election that they were ready to reach compromise, but not at any price. Which is you know uh, what um, what I think. The citizens have to see now in this election is that uh, you know we have a track. I mean the Socialist Party has a track record in government. Uh, they have tried to reach compromise with the political parties that were ready to do it. Uh, Podemos was, you know, ready to do it, but only on the condition that they would get seats in the government. And sometimes with the impression that there would be two governments, which is something that, you know, the Socialist Party said, well, this is a red line. Ciudadanos, uh, which is, as you mentioned, a new political party, um, basically uh, put a veto uh, based on its own political interests and not so much putting um, the, the interests of the country um, on, on the table. All right. And so the Spanish citizens need now to, to judge based on this. Based on this and based on also, and we'll talk about it when we come back, what's going on in Catalonia. Stay with us. You're watching the France 24 debate. Welcome back, or welcome if you're just joining us. It's the France 24 debate, and we're looking ahead to an uncertain Spanish general election. With us, Tony Fernandez from Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez's Socialist Party. We're also in the company of uh, commentators and, uh, and attorneys, Edward Salsas and uh, Jean-Marc Sanchez. And from Barcelona, Berta Babet, researcher at the Autonomous University of Barcelona. Uh, Berta, there was a... Um, De candidates debate on uh, Monday night, five major parties represented. And uh, hmm, what, what's striking when you see the five uh, that were uh, represented uh, uh, on stage, well, they're uh, five men, right? And uh, all of re the relatively the same age. Uh, you, your thoughts on the fact that there aren't many women there uh, up, uh, up on stage? Yeah, which is, which is surprising considering that the feminist movement has been very successful in Spain for the last two years in pushing the agenda and being very visible. But but uh, still, uh, it ha like there's a lot of women who are kind of a spokeswoman of the of their parties. But when it comes to the the leading position, uh, that doesn't seem to be to be kind of having any effect. It, has that and been a talking point? So, sorry? Has that been a talking point on the campaign? Well, the feminist movement has criticized it a lot and has been kind of trying to push for it. But but uh, as far as I'm aware, none of the parties have thought about changing their candidate for, for a woman. They've, they've made some changes behind uh, be, or below the, the candidate level, but, but it hasn't changed that much, which uh, it's part of the reason probably why, we, why we're seeing this kind of like frustration uh, among certain uh, sectors of society with, with what has happened in the political sphere in the last years. Now, uh, we showed you in part one of our discussion uh, that poll of polls done by a newspaper, El País. Uh, they also asked, what are the issues that matter most? We talked in part one about who can build a coalition, but there's also, as you can see, unemployment, public services, the economy, social inequality, climate change, all, all the way down in seventh position is Catalonia and the issue of, uh, of separatism. However, when you watch Monday's candidates debate, it sure got fiery when events in Barcelona and elsewhere were mentioned. 
This is a chunk of pavement from my city, Barcelona. This is what was thrown at the national police, at the Mossos, at shops and terraces. Pedro Sanchez says that nothing is going on in Catalonia. Is it normal for him that rocks and stones are thrown in central Barcelona? This chunk of pavement represents public unrest. Now, the prime minister answered in kind, Pedro Sanchez, uh, insisting that divisions over Catalonia will be settled by dialogue. But the socialist standard bearer also said the following. We're going to create a new crime in our penal code to ban once and for all any celebration of illegal referendums in Catalonia, such as what we saw when the People's Party was in government. So which side are the socialists on when it comes to how to uh, break out of the, uh, of the current tension with uh, those long prison sentences that were handed down to separatist leaders recently? Well, I think we have always been in the same place, which is that, uh, first of all, the rules, uh, the rule of law needs to be respected. Uh, we said that when we were in the opposition, when Rajoy was prime minister, and we continue to say that in the government. Uh, the ones that maybe have to explain their change in position and the rhetorics that, are using, uh, that they are using are uh, Partido Popular, who is only loyal to itself when they are in government and not when they are in the opposition. I think that the Catalan crisis is certainly a very important issue, uh, no doubt about it. Uh, but, but if it, he's re-elected, which Pedro Sanchez will it be? Will it be the one who's offering dialogue or the one who's saying, I'm going to have a new law to, uh, to ban, uh, to, to, to criminalize unsanctioned referendums? But I think it's, it's consistent with what the courts uh, have, been, uh, you know, have uh, concluded. Uh, one thing is not excluding the other. I mean, I think that, first of all, you need to respect the rules of the game when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, call for uh, electoral procedures like a referendum. Uh, and obviously, once you... Uh, you know, declare your respect for these type of rules. I mean, there's the possibility to have a dialogue. And I think that the first dialogue that needs to take place is within the, the Catalan society, because I think that many times we overlook the fact that it's a divided society in two. I mean, so it's not, you know, a monolithic Catalonia against the central state. I mean, like within Catalonia, you have a 50-50 divide approximately. And what Pedro Sánchez has been saying is, first of all, let's respect the rules. Let's have the institutions the Catalan institutions in particular, uh, you know, respecting the legality, and then, you know, political dialogue can happen within that framework. All right, Edward Salsas, first of all, answering Tony Fernandez, is that dialogue today possible amongst Catalonians, among those who, who, who are separatists and those who are not? I think that, that the debate in Catalonia is, is pretty mature. Uh, the Catalans, Catalans have been debating this issue for a very long time. Another, another problem is that the central government was not aware that this, this debate was going on in Catalonia. They just ignored that this question was being debated be, be, uh, among you know, these two parts, the, the, the independentists and the non-independentists. And I think that when you listen to Catalan people talking about this uh, among Catalans, it's not as fierce and as... And, and, uh, and as uh, I would say verbally violent as when it's discussed with people from the rest of Spain. Well, look at those images. Uh, uh, the, 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 those were the scenes a few weeks ago uh, it, it, where after those long jail sentences were handed down in Madrid. It, it is very disappointing and, and it's very disappointing that there was this vandalism acts uh, following the sentence uh, by, the, by the Supreme Court. But let's not forget that, OK, there was some vandalism in, in the streets, but Let's, let's turn to the politics. Let's turn to the people responsible for public order. Uh, Tony was saying before, let's respect the rules. Well, it's kind of surprising that now Pedro Sánchez is, is, is proposing to modify the rules in order to criminalize what the people, the independents did before the election. So how come they are in jail for something that was allegedly not criminal because now he wants to change the, the rules, to change the law in order to criminalize what they did before. It, one of the basic rules in criminal law is that it's not retroactive. So here we have a retroactive effect of the law. But far from that is the fact that Pedro Sánchez arrived to the government because of Podemos, the far left, and because of the independentists. These two, these two blocks in the, in the Spanish parliament put Pedro Sánchez in the power. 18 months later, what we see is that Pedro Sánchez has been incapable of reaching an agreement either with independentists or with the far left. So, uh, 
I cannot bear what, but but wonder with who is who is he, is he going to to dialogue with who is he is expecting to dialogue because as far as the others are concerned both the independentists and the far left they are willing to dialogue they are willing to reach agreements the problem is that we have Pedro Sánchez who believes that with 120 seats which is approximately one third of the parliament he can be the president and give no explanation and give no and reach no agreements with no other party. So, Tony Fernandez, of course, right now it's a campaign. So, everybody grandstands, everybody uh, shows bluster. What's really going to happen after Election Day? Well, I wish I had a crystal ball. Well, I mean, the first thing is, is uh, I think that the Socialist Party What would you Party personally expects... like to see in terms of uh, how do you guess, well, initiate a meaningful dialogue between the, the various sides? Well, first of all, I, I hope that the Spanish society uh, acknowledges the fact that the Socialist Party, which, you know, arrived to the government, uh, you know, uh, after a no-confidence vote in the parliament, uh, was there, first of all, to restore credibility, not because there was an agreement with any independentist, independentist uh, pro-independence force in Catalonia. I mean, they presented themselves to restore credibility to the government, who, let's not forget, the Partido Popular had been uh, condemned in a, in a court case for corruption charges, uh, and they arrived to the government. And so I hope that the Spanish society sees the track record of all these months, trying to restore, first of all, credibility in government, second, trying to restore a certain normality in Catalonia. Uh, but I think that when, what but, you mentioned before in terms of messages, since the opposition has been conducting the whole campaign as if the only subject that mattered to Spanish society was Catalonia, uh, I think that the messages from the, 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 the Spanish government were basically to reassure people that you know the respect for the rule of law is going to be kept, not because we are trying to reopen a case, uh, you know, a legal case before the past. I think that what happened has been judged by the Supreme Court. Uh, and, you know, uh, the government has nothing to do in that in the sense that, you know, it's a, it's a court case, mm -hmm. it's a, you know, there's a separation of powers in Spain, and therefore the only thing that we can do is to accept it. And I think that a, a democratic society has to accept that when the rules, uh, you know, are being applied, uh, you cannot, as we have seen, uh, contest them violently in the, in the streets. Berta Barbet, how's that message going down where you are in Barcelona? I think I think that basically uh, what what we're seeing in, in Barcelona and, and in the recent years also in the Spanish debate is is a problem with uh, of of a, a, a very responsible leadership in in all sides. We we need time. Uh, we need time to to think quiet, quietly and to and to talk without the pressure of having a political campaign. But ironically, it's impossible to have this time to kind of like improve the situation so that the dialogue can be productive because right now we're having a very unproductive uh, debate. I don't think it's mature at all. It's quite unproductive and quite absurd to be fair. But in order to in order for us to have this time to in order for us to have this kind of like mm, productive uh, discussions on issues on which we can all agree and can help move the situation further, we need to stop voting and, and having political campaigns. And obviously this is quite impossible in a moment where the situation is creating a political blockage that, uh, that doesn't allow for a government and stable government to be formed. So, so I think that the change of government made things slightly better, but obviously uh, the, the change could not be complete and drastic and fast, and people have started to get impatient um, way before they should have, and, and there's a lot, a lot of frustration appear very quickly, the appearance of Vox didn't help. So I think that, that, that that's how the situation is. And, and, and but, but then if, if you're, hang, hang on, if you're in Catalonia right now, and you're yeah. in favor of dialogue between uh, the separatists and the central authorities in Madrid. Who who do you dialogue with? Is it with the current president of the region? Is it with Oriol Junqueras, the, the 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 jailed former number two of Catalonia? Who do, who should the dialogue be with? Well, I think probably the dialogue should be multilateral uh, among many actors at the same time. I think it's impossible to try to solve the situation without having the president of the Catalan region on the table. That's something that somehow has uh, some people have, have proposed, and it, it looks absurd even from the 
legal point of view. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the president of the Catalan government is the only person that should be on the table, because as, as it's been said, uh, the situation in Catalonia is complex and there are many voices that should be present in any solution. And so obviously you should talk to, to the different parts and the different parts should talk among them and, and probably we just need some some very long uh, time of of dialogues and proposals and counter proposals and and something more more complex than uh, than than what's been proposed uh, due to the limited amount of time that the actors have had. Yeah. So so, so Jean Marc Sanchez, you just heard Berta saying, mm -hmm. we need to have substantive dialogue, something that takes time. But at the same time, voters are impatient. They're sick of the gridlock. They want some kind of closure fast. Most of your questions, François, have been answered 100 years ago by Manuel Ortega Gasset in a book called España Invertebrada, Spain Without Bones. Today it's basically the same situation. Nothing has really changed. We have a new system, but with five political parties who cannot get along together. And I think that the Catalan crisis is one of the issues they have to solve. It, that, that's not the only one. That's, that's one of the significant ones. Uh, the far uh, uh, right party, Vox, is a competitor to the Partido Popular, uh, the uh, constitutional conservative party. Uh, on the other side, Sudanenos is a competitor to the uh, uh, PSOE, and they cannot get along together. Uh, in the middle of them, um, what do you have? Uh, you have basically uh, 46 million Spaniards expecting people, as your uh, survey showed it, to solve their day-to-day -day problem where unemployment, housing, security, and at the end of the day, and at the end of the day... That's what the they Catalonia tell pollsters, but what we're correct. arguing about a lot is Catalonia. Well, the problem is that we have probably in Spain the, the poorest political personnel ever. And the big problem is coming, I'm sorry about Tony's friends, uh, but the big problem is coming from the political leaders who are unable to govern this country for 40 years. The rules have been set up after uh, the uh, Franco time, but now that time is over and maybe we should, if not change, adapt the rules to the new game and the new players. The, the, this, this is a criticism that's been, that's been leveled against both the PP when they were in power and Pedro Sanchez, which is the Catalan crisis it can be seen by some as a distraction from the fact that this all began with um, a housing crisis, a banking crisis, and, and brutal austerity. Well, I think that precisely, I mean, you mentioned before the issue of, um, you know, the, the, the presence of uh, a, a white male, uh, you know, in the debate. I mean, I think that the Spanish government today has a majority of women. So uh, there are a number of symbolic things uh, that the government has been doing. There have been measures that the government has been taking, uh, you know, to address social reforms, uh, raising the minimum wage, uh, raising the, 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 the public pensions. So. I think that the, one, the parties that have mon that tried to make the public debate only, uh, and only uh, the only issue be in Catalonia have been basically, uh, you know, Partido Popular and Ciudadanos, which, by the way, I mean, if I may, uh, since you speak about friends, I mean, I wouldn't define them precisely as competitors because they are in coalition or they are in agreement with the far right in a number of regional governments in Spain. And I think that this is also another very defining factor of the opposition in Spain compared to France or Germany, where you have the center or the center right, uh, you know, trying to isolate the far right um, hatred speech uh, compared to Spain, where they are trying to, where they have, you know, reached agreements with them in Andalusia or, or uh, in Madrid or in other regions to govern with, uh, you know, such a political party with such a speech. So I think that, you know, it's easy. I understand that people can be tired of voting every four years, uh, every, I mean, four times, sorry, four times, uh, you know. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, this is democracy. I mean, this is, these are the real issues that, I mean, the important issues that are at stake deserve people to go to vote on Sunday. And I don't think that you can put every political party or every uh, political leader in the same bag. Uh, because right, when, you, when you think of the reasons why uh, the Spanish are returning to the polls for the fourth time in four years on Sunday, Edward Salsas, is how important is Catalonia in all of that? I, th I think it's important, but it's not the main issue. The I mean, main let's, issue is what? The, 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 let's just face it. We have a Spanish government living with a budget which lasts from two years. So in two years, they have been unable to approve a budget. But the Catalan government either. They, they are also having a lot of problems to approving the budget. And behind this smoke curtain of Catalonia and independence, there's a lot of social problems in, in Spain. And we need to 
to address these problems instead of talking about who's the most patriot, because being a patriot is not having a, a very big flag, a Catalan flag or a Spanish flag. Being a patriot is believing in his, in his country, believing in his public system, believing in his public health, in the education. So I need, I think that we need to address these problems. And what what the what I think what the Spanish society is. Is, is saying and is giving a lot of signals is that they are tired of this and they are disappointed. There's a lot of frustration in this leadership. And I do not agree that, that uh, there are some parties who would be better than others. Uh, we've seen that with a government of the Popular Party, the, the Popular Party was unable to reach agreements. With the Social Party, they are unable to reach agreements. The, the separatists are unable to reach agreements. I think that the Spanish politicians should learn from other countries and start uh, believing that in, a, in the 21st century society, you need to reach agreements with the people who think differently from you. And this is something that I don't know exactly so what, why. Be, be more like the Italians who are able to make coalitions? <laughs> they are able to make coalitions. They are very weak coalitions. But, but I mean, work. something like that, that that happened in Germany, like the big coalition, this is something that is completely... Mm, uh, in, or irrealistic in Spain. I mean, nobody even thinks about it, and and which is a kind of a good idea. But reaching agreements, th looking for the things that we have in common, not th the things that separate us. Berta Barbet, you agree that uh, a grand coalition is just anathema to a country like Spain? I, I think that Spain traditionally has not had a very clear center of this space. Uh, the, uh, you have to think that it was not that long ago that the country was in a civil war. And, and so usually it's, it's traditionally, if you see the polls, it has quite a bipolar uh, distribution of preferences. And, and usually it makes more sense to group people on kind of terms of left and right than the other way around. But obviously it would depend on the issue that is on the table. And that's the debate you have been having. Like, if the debate is over the structure of the state and how Spain should be, so Spanish identity should be protected, the coalition should be one. If if the debate moves to the economy and and the welfare state and all these other policies, then they should change the the coalition. And I think that's something that political parties need to accept. That that that. In multi-party systems, you have to choose which issues you're going to care the most and then politicize those issues and make coalitions along, along those issues. All right. Since we have the attention right. of four yeah. Spaniards, let's ask them about the campaign in that other SNAP election. Everybody's watching. Dateline Glasgow last Saturday as supporters of the Scottish National Party make their way to a rally where the first minister said independence is uh, within a touching distance. Now, it's interesting, the UK, uh, Berta Barbet, because it's a country where uh, they too were used to have these big tents, center left and center right blocks, which are coming under pressure this time. What's going on? It's not just Spain, is it? No, I think we're seeing in many uh, European and even developed countries, we're seeing some kind of like collapse of the economic identities and the and the identities that used to structure preferences and borders are kind of following more their national and or other identities and probably that has has a lot to do with how the economy has been managed and how borders of certain um, sectors of society are were very frustrated of thinking along the terms and thinking about themselves with in terms of like working class people and they've probably decided to change identities and just use one that makes made them feel better and 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 that's where we're seeing things like brexit but also the the nationalist movement that we've seen for example in italy that you were talking about all the anti-immigration movements are also quite identity um and even in German, like we're seeing this kind of dynamics where where, where many borders, especially um, or interestingly, many of them from very working class backgrounds, kind of like giving up on their economic identities and just choosing this national identity that generates a completely different scenario, as as we've seen in the UK and maybe we're gonna end up seeing in Spain. Yeah, Jean-Marc Sanchez, uh, in the UK, uh, people in their backyards, uh, they used to take out the flag of St. George only when England was playing football. Now it's, we're seeing it more often. And our, our Madrid correspondent, Sarah Morris, telling us that uh, people didn't used to have the Spanish flag way, waving outside their balcony. Well, it depends. It depends for uh, what kind of circumstances. But I just wanted to uh, 
uh, comment what uh, was mentioned before about symbolism and politics. Of course, politics is about symbolism. And what we can see, for instance, in the street of Barcelona uh, is uh, nothing compared to what happened in France during the uh, Yellow Vest protest during a year. Uh, and again, symbolism but here, is here one we're thing, talking, but here it's we're not talking, enough. We're talking about an election, and Berta Barbet just said, people are now identifying more with their tribe, if you will, their group, rather than uh, with... Uh, the, the old divide, which was class interests. Well, that, that's what right. I was saying before. I mean, Spain is a country of a mixture of languages, history, uh, uh, traditions, and it's very complex to, to, to define how to, to rule it. And again, symbolism is, is something very significant in politics, but I don't think that burying some, somebody twice makes politics any better. Edward Salsas, when you look at what's going on in the UK, what lessons do you draw for Spain? Well, I think that that in the UK they are doing things differently, but the movement is the same. That as Berta was saying before, that we have uh, the same the same uh, trends in all around all around uh, Europe. Uh, in a way, uh, each 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 country has its specific its specific uh, um, details, but but the trend is is the same. What I would say is that uh, in Spain we have been able. To, to to have a very long democratic period, peaceful period, reaching agreements and finding the things that were in common among us. And, and now we see political parties who tell Spanish people how to be a good Spaniard or how to be a good Catalan. And I think that this is a very negative uh, message given to the population. You agree with that, Tony Fernandez? Yes, but let's identify what political parties are having that speech, mm -hmm. because I think that's the important uh, thing. Um, uh, I mean, we, we are seeing a global phenomenon, as uh, you know, uh, was mentioned before, of polarization of uh, the political debate. But some political parties, uh, in an irresponsible manner, are precisely fueling this type of speech. Uh, in Spain, you have uh, uh, Partido Popular and Ciudadanos, who have been running all the elections as if the only thing that mattered was to be a good Spaniard. And I think that uh, the Socialist Party, if I may, uh, has been uh, trying to put in the center of the agenda uh, the issues that matter, Catalonia is obviously one, because how we live together as a country is a very important thing. First of all, within Catalonia, because it, as I said before, there's a 50% divide, but there are other issues as well uh, that have been completely uh, removed from the debate because, I mean, some political parties, in this case, Partido Popular or Ciudadanos or obviously the far right, right have tried to lead the debate on those terms. Uh, Berta Barbet, we're out of time. Uh, is the vitriol worse, you think, than in the UK right now? Sorry? Is the vitriol on the campaign trail worse than in the UK, the same? It's, it's different, because um, the situation, like, uh, politically is very different. Uh, it's, uh, hopefully it's going to get better soon uh, in both places, to, to be fair, because I, I live in the UK, so I'm kind of hoping they also solve their political situation fast. All right, Berta Barbet, I want to thank you for joining us from Barcelona. I want to thank Tony Fernandez. I also want to thank Edward Salsas, Jean-Marc Sanchez. Thank you for being with us here in the France 24 debate.